very good morning from Tatton's iconic Japanese garden here. This year we were going to produce a garden inspired by this place but more inspired by some of the cultural events that we put on each year uh, like Children's Day and Autumn and Spring celebrations and also um, Tanabata which is a festival of essentially wishes for children to tie on bamboo trees, to be blown into the wind and to come true, which I think is you know, a fantastic Japanese uh, festival that can be shared all around the world and something we really wanted to share with uh, the customers for RHS Tampa, but that's not to be the case. We are going to talk a little bit about some of the inspiration for that garden and using this as a backdrop to talk about some of the inspiration that you would have got from that garden at RHS Tatton um, and give you some of those ideas and thoughts here at Tatton Park for you to take away and use at home. The good, there's good news and there's bad news folks. The good news is the planting within most Japanese gardens is really really simple. The simpler the better in many many respects. But you'll find the palette of planting is very very restricted. Now that creates a stereotypical form within Japanese gardens but from a point of view of a horticulturalist we've got a kind of set of actors if you like within this little theatre which is the Japanese garden. Now that's probably the best way to look at it. Look at it as a stage, a framed stage. Within that frame, there are a few actors. And those actors would be the pines, the maples, the azalea, and the moss. Now think of those as the four principal actors within the garden, and that movement of the actors around that stage, and you're starting to get a feel horticulturally from what that garden is. One of the important parts of that stage set, as was told to me by um, Professor Fukuhara from Japan, who came to work within this garden for us, is think of the lighting on the stage. Now, principally, what that actually translates to mean is that when are you going to look at that garden? Is it in the evening time? Is it in the morning? Is it all day long? Assemble the plants where the light it's the garden. Now, if you wanted to go look at a garden in the evening time, you want evening sun, but that is a variable all year round, of course. But think principally of when you will be looking at that garden at the most, uh, at the most frequent time, and that will give you some aspect of where shadows and light and dappled shade moves through a garden. Okay, well, that was the good news. Um, the less good news, um, I suppose, is that. We've got our theatre, we've got our actors. What is the performance you want to put on? Now by that I mean, what type of garden are you gonna create? Is it gonna be this kind of mix of everything? Is it gonna be specific? And to create something authentic, it needs to be specific. And here we are sat in a tea style garden. There are thousands, there's many, many types of garden. There's water gardens, there's flower gardens, there's dry gardens, the Kerenson Sui style, uh, Buddhist style gardens. There are um, hill gardens, there are park gardens. There, It's looking at a style that fits where you are. And if we are to imitate nature, and that's what the whole thing is all about, condensing nature within a frame, within this... Uh, theatre set with these actors, we've got to look very, very carefully at what our performance is going to be. Now, is it a story about you? Is it a story about your house? Um, is it a story about Japan? Think very, very carefully. And that is probably the most authentic thing you can do by assembling these things of rocks and stones and water and plants. What are you trying to make? Now, one of the keys here is borrowing scenery and um, Shekai is a principle whereby an open door to reveal a tree beyond your house, um, 
a gap in the fence that reveals the hills beyond, brings that scenery into the garden and creates another feeling within the space. Here at Tatton, we're borrowing all the pine trees around us to make us feel like we're not in leafy Cheshire, we're somewhere in the hills and mountains of Japan. And that's what this garden is doing, is borrowing the scenery around here to create a dewy path to collect water, to take tea in the tea house behind us. So think carefully what you want. Plan the performance. We've got our theatre. We've established what performance we're putting on. Um, and we've got our actors. Now, a little bit more about the actors. Um, in no particular order, we have Moss, which is Polytrichum communis, which is a very standard acid, shade and damp loving moss, common throughout the Northern Hemisphere, pretty much everywhere. Beautiful little thing. Um, carpeted under Kurumi azaleas, evergreen, Japanese evergreen azaleas, clipped into a shape of, is it a cloud? Is it a stone? Is it something you can walk up and hug? All of the above. Um, and that's kind of what we're trying to create here. Clouds above the forest, the hills. It's abstract art. It's horticulture meets the imagination, really. Behind the azalea here is uh, a maple, uh, Acer palmatum in all its hundreds of forms. Older the better, of course, but shaped carefully. And by carefully, I mean open, so light filters through, which will do naturally. We're trying to bring growth down um, taking upright growth, they will always be trying to be kind of apically dominant, they'll always try and grow up. We're trying to spread the shade and spread the canopy, uh, even to the point of training some of these trees. You could tie down um, some of these branches here, place a stone uh, at the bottom of the piece of string, just hold them down for a few seasons, and lo and behold, you'll have a nice low growing. Um, uh, branch here that will kind of look like it's been there forever um, and above that we have behind some of the pine trees which again evergreen shade providing shade now shades often the bugbear of most gardens but here very much so within this style of Japanese garden um, it is very very beneficial it also has the effect of um, moving light as the sun tracks around the garden different patches of light appear through these canopies and which case you can then start illuminating some of the bit part actors you could bring in to that some of the ferns or you could bring into it some little specimen trees like Euronymus alertus or the hornbeams or even Japanese hornbeams or something like Ilic cronata which is the Japanese box leafed holly these are little kind of bit part performers that can be put into the stage as the light moves around. And if we look at it like that, then if you're ever going to go and see this garden when you come home from work, think of all seasons where the light moves around this garden and you have each evening a little performance that mirrors both the season and the light. One of the final bits of this kind of uh, performance, if you want to put it like that, is ensuring that all the actors stay apart. Now, by that I mean that there should always be some layers of separation um, between the moss, the azaleas, the maples and the pines. Now, for that is really, horticulture is quite important, it's kind of creating light and air, which is always good for plant health, of course. But it always um, allows then uh, the movement of light through the garden. And when we talk about that kind of deep appreciation of nature that 
Japanese gardens are essentially about condensing nature, uh, creating an aged form, is really ensuring that we're trying to mimic nature. Nature never just grows everything together. If you look within a forest, there is a hierarchy of plants within a natural forest. And that is essentially what we're trying to do here. So maintaining separation between plants is very, very key to creating this stage set. Okay, here we are um, in a much drier, sunnier part of the garden here. Um, not everybody's blessed with a, a lot of shade and damper, moister parts of, 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 of gardens. Um, but here we're using a dry part of the garden here to kind of create a more abstract space. Um, however, what we're trying to form here is, this is quite a new part of the garden, it's probably only at most 20 year old. Um, but we've got a cloud garden. We've got these, uh, this white gravel here is symbolizing moving clouds. We've got the stones behind me of the mountain peaks rising through the clouds and below looking down we've got the moss which is to kind of resemble the forests below and interspersed with that plantings of, of moss and gravel and pines behind me we've got the lovely evergreen azaleas here cut to hug a rock here just kind of low clipped low um, wrapping itself around this peak here creating an idea of something that's been there forever and to do that is essentially frequent clipping feeding when we need to to establish it watering because it's a dry space but essentially regular clipping now after flowering it'll be clipped once they'll re-break and they'll be clipped again avoiding clipping as we get into the growing tea the the, the winter time um, not that they're, they're frost susceptible but new growth will be frost uh, susceptible um, so it's ensuring that we get these little tight kind of bun shapes um, think of something you could get your arms <coughs> your arms around that it's, it's soft but also it's kind of symbolizing something else here it's kind of looking at kind of passing clouds and it's kind of freezing a moment and that creates this idea this deeper appreciation of nature of holding moments of time and creating this sense of a serene and still place.